Sunday is that special time for us to get together and study the Word of God. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning for our presentation of Give Me the Bible. So go get your Bible, sit down, and let's study together from the pages of God's eternal Word right here on Give Me the Bible. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for joining us today for our telecast of Give Me the Bible. You know, so oftentimes we turn on the television and we hear a lot of people call it fake news, but sometimes we hear bad news. And our program this morning is really going to focus on this idea of how do you handle bad news when you hear it. You know, sometimes we start jumping to conclusions and we, our, our imagination it just runs wild. And there's some things that we need to do when you really stop and think about it. When you hear bad news, and we hear a lot of it in a day's time. So I hope that you'll uh, just stay right where you are. Don't grab the channel changer there, the remote, and uh, but just listen to what we're going to share with you this morning because it can really be extremely helpful to you and to all who view this telecast today right here on Give Me the Bible. You know, I've learned that one of the things that we need to do foremost and before anything else when we hear bad news is to verify whether or not it really is true or not. You know, you can hear anything today. Uh, it's just like when you go to the internet. I used to think that everything was uh, all on the uh, level when you saw it on the internet. I mean, it wouldn't be on the internet if it were not true. But I've come to the conclusion that that is absolutely not true. Now, when you verify something, you want to get the details. You want to find out exactly what went on, when it went on, who it really happened to, and actually what did happen. You know, gossip is a bad thing. Sometimes people gossip about certain things, and they'll say, did you hear so-and-so? And instead of maybe someone just hearing that in a passive way, it becomes reality to the next person. And he begins to perpetuate that gossip by saying, you know, I bet that really did happen. And then the next person says, hey, you know, did you hear what actually happened? And it becomes fact. Well, it really isn't fact at all. So we have to be extremely careful when we talk about hearing bad news. Now, we want to go further this morning in our discussion of this subject because there's so much to be said about it. And we're going to give you facts here this morning, and we're going to give you the Word of God concerning. The Bible says that we're to prove all things and to hold fast to that which is good. That's why we verify it. But then also, we must act upon it. And I want to call upon Brother Barry Haynes right now from over at Hope, Arkansas, to, to help us understand uh, and share with us why it's so important to act on this bad news, Barry. You know, oftentimes when we hear bad news, we, we get a sense of hopelessness. We, we see something happening and we feel the world is out of control. And I think that's why it's so important that when we do hear bad news, that we do something that we act. I recently read about a study that was done in office workers. And they looked at these office workers and they could divide them into two groups, ones that felt like they had control over their deadlines and the things that they were being asked to do, others who didn't feel like they had any control. And what they found is that group that didn't have any control was 50% more likely to have heart attacks, coronary disease, heart issues. This was so much a high factor that it actually outranked having high blood pressure as a cause for this. They did a similar survey to residents of nursing homes, and they found that in the nursing homes, if people were given a sense of something to do, even if it was as simple as taking care of a house plant that they were responsible for watering and taking care of daily, that their death rate would drop by half. It's because they were doing something, they felt more in control, and it helped them. Same thing is true for us. When we hear bad news, we need to ask ourselves, what can I do? Even if we can't do something directly related to the event that happened bad, we can do something. Even if something bad happens, we can look around at our own communities and our own, uh, own brethren and find, what can I do for someone else? 
That's an attitude that's essential for the Christian because the Bible teaches us that we're to be people that are doers, that are active. Romans 12, 11 tells us not to be slothful in business, but further fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Instead of sitting around and watching all the bad things and wondering how bad it's going to get, if we find ourselves active and doing something, it will change not only uh, our outlook on the event, but also give us a sense of purpose. A sense of helplessness just leaves us thinking that, that nothing can be done. But when we actively do something, we'll find there are good things and good can overcome the evil that is in the world. That is, if we do something with it. You know, James tells us in James chapter 4 and verse 17, Therefore him who knoweth to do good and doeth not, to him it is a sin. You know, oftentimes we think about sin as things that we do. But the truth of the matter is, is there is as much sin of what we don't do. So let's make sure that when we hear bad news that we don't just sit around and mope, but we try to find something good to do instead. Well, Barry, you said it well, and we appreciate so much your timely comments this morning. And, you know, there are so many, many things, brethren, that you and I can do. Uh, when we hear that bad news, that can help us uh, minimize it to some degree. I think one of the great ways that we minimize it sometimes is uh, and be able to get through it is by simply calling upon God through the avenue of prayer. And you might ask yourself, what do you do when you hear bad news? Do you pray about it? Hopefully you will. But the Jerry Monholland help us understand that. Well, thank you, Dan. I certainly hope that as you're listening to this program, and if you're going through difficult times, that this will be of, uh, of comfort to you and a, and a source of information for you to help you th through these times. And one of the, uh, the things that we can do in getting through these times is certainly go to Father, our Father in prayer. One of the greatest actions we can do is to go humble ourselves, bow our knees, bow our head, and our Heavenly Father bow down His ear to hear us. I know that as we think about prayer and we think about uh, casting all our cares upon Him, 1 Peter 5, 7, that there are certain things that we can gain from prayer that help us through these difficult times. I think of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, when we talk about strength, that whenever Paul was there and he had his problem with the thorn in the flesh, he said this, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities. That thorn in the flesh was something he, he wanted removed, but it was an infirmity. He said, I take pleasure in, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. You see, Paul realized, I, this is out of my control. I cannot do this. I cannot make this without God's help. And he, he realizes his weakness. And one thing we can see in our weakness is that to go to our Father in prayer and realize that when we are weak, he is strong. Another is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, talking about hope. D to realize whenever we're in difficulties, pray because it says, uh, for, this, for this cause we faint not, or we don't give up. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Well, if we go to our Father in prayer, to just have that inward renewal of the Spirit, to give us hope and perseverance, to know that this, whatever we're going through, is temporary. It may seem like a long time, even a day or an hour may seem like a long time during difficulties. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in prayer for strength. Spend time in prayer for hope. Go to God in prayer in these difficulties. Now back to you, Dan. Well, Jerry, thank you so much. And certainly we understand the value of prayer, do we not? Uh, we understand that God really wants us to communicate to him our feelings. And that's what it really is all about because God knows what's going on. And, uh, you know, it's not us trying to inform God about it, but helping us to gain strength through those prayers that Jerry has mentioned. I want to go to Brother Joe Hancock right now. And Joe, I know that, uh, you know, if you listen to meteorologists and you have an approaching storm, they will tell you that hopefully you have a plan in the event of a tornado or a strong storm to keep your family safe. You know, one of the things that we have to do is to actually think 
about what we would do if bad news were to hit our ears and uh, think about what we should do. And so, Joe, help us understand that this morning. Why important? Why it's so important for us to really think? Thank you, Dan. I'd be my pleasure to do that this morning. Good morning, folks, and thank you again for tuning into the show this morning. Uh, you know, your mind is a wonderful and, and majestic tool. Uh, it, it's, it's continually running day in, day out. Even when you're sleeping, your mind's still at work. To put the thinking process into action is one of the best things we can do when we come across bad news or hear bad news or something happens in our, our families or with our friends that's, that's tragic or even close to that. And the negative side of that is that if we put too much negative thought into the action or into the, the event that happened, it can drive us crazy. Uh, the negative things that we can dwell on, the this and the that, the, the, the old poor poor and, and a poor poor feel for me because it's one of my close friends or a family member, uh, those negative thoughts can just really be depressing. And depression is not what we need when we come across bad news. We need to be able to see the lighter side of things. We need to think the process through. As Dan said before, did it actually happen? Was, was it really that situation or did it really happen that way when we hear the bad news? And to come to an understanding, okay, what, what really can I do? I can, I can think it through. I can think about what I can do to help in that family situation or that friend situation. I can think, and as Jerry just said, I, I can think and go to God in prayer. And, you know, scriptures say in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, thinking that I can handle this by myself is, is a not so good a thought because there's a lot of times we can't handle things by ourselves. And when we're thinking about all the positive things, we need to be thinking about what Paul talked about in Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, beginning at verse 16, he would say this, or verse 6 rather, be anxious for nothing. Now, the first thing we need to think about is, okay, I don't need to be all upset about this. I don't need to get anxious about it. It is what it is. I just need to think it through. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. As Jerry said, go, go to God in prayer. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And he talks about in verse 8, think on these things, these things that are uh, pleasant, these things that are pure, these things that are lovely, these things that are of good report. The most positive thoughts we can put into our mind, especially at times of bad news, will do us as good as anything else along with that prayer. Dan? Well, Joe, you've given us some good advice and some uh, meat to chew on there this morning, and we appreciate it so much. And uh, you know, one of the things that I think really is beneficial when we hear bad news is to maybe share that with our friends or with someone who's going to help us get through it. You certainly don't want to go to a pessimist and someone is saying, yeah, that's probably true, you know, and it's probably worse than you heard. I want to go to someone who says, hey, well, we're going to get through this, we're going to work through it, and I share it with my friends and people that can have compassion and love and understanding. And that's why we need to talk to one another. And Brother Chris Grow to help us uh, get a little bit further along in this thought of talking to others about what we hear. Yes, Dan, and thank you all for watching this morning. In our text in Genesis chapter 37, when Jacob gets the bad news about Joseph, you remember that he thought he was dead and all of his sons and daughters arose to comfort him. Um, I don't know whether they said much or whether they were just present. I know it's as important to be able to talk to people as it is to be able to listen. And sometimes we just need to be a listening ear. But you know, talking to people about bad news uh, helps us to process the information. It helps us to uh, alleviate and deal with the anxiety of the situation. And of course, anytime we're able to, to vent or to listen to those who are, it does create deeper relationships and a deeper and greater bond. I'm thinking about Lazarus' death over in John 11 and verse number 31. And when Jesus got on the scene to Mary and Martha's house, there were a number of Jews that were gathered together to comfort them. And when Peter went to prison because of Herod over in Acts chapter 12, um, you remember when he got out of jail, uh, he went over uh, to uh, Mary and John Mark's house and, 
and Rhoda was there at the door and she thought it was his angel or his ghost and, and she really wasn't sure it was actually Peter. But it says in that text that there was, the church was gathered there praying. What were they doing? Well, they were, they were tremendously and deeply grieved and bothered and, and no doubt thought that, uh, that Peter's imprisonment meant his death sentence and they were there to fervently pray with one another. They were comforting one another. They were talking to each other and helping them process through that. Uh, just recently, there was a shooting at our Waterburger in Mount Pleasant, and and you know what they're going to do with all the employees that were working that shift when all that happened? They're going to have a debriefing session with them, which means they're going to sit down and counsel with them and talk to them and let them vent, and, and they're going to listen to them and help them process through that information. Friends, we have passages like Romans 12, verse 15, that says, Rejoice with those that rejoice, and weep with those that weep. And 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 25 and 26 indicates that as the body of Christ, we need to have genuine care one for another. And my friends, that involves not only talking out our problems with people, but it involves our listening to them as well as part of that therapeutic process. That's a gift from God. Back to you, Dan. Chris, thank you so much. And certainly talking it out is an important thing, isn't it? And, uh, you know, it's so hard to find a good listener anymore, isn't it? Someone that will really sit down and listen to you talk, but seek the right person out and then vent yourself and talk about it and help yourself get over what you hear. One of the things we have to do sometimes, and I know this really isn't a pleasant concept, but we have to accept the bad news. Uh, you know, it could be the death of a loved one, could it be the death of a child, it could be anything. And we're going to ask for the Carrie Clark now from over in Athens, Texas, to share with us some thoughts along this line. Thank you so much, Brother Dan. And, and you know, sometimes we're a little bit too willing to accept, and that's why Dan said a moment ago you need to verify it and make sure that it's true. But in all of this, we know that the Word of God gives us the light that we need. And the psalmist wrote in Psalm 112, he says, Praise ye the Lord, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright, listen to this, he says, There ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Verse 6 says, Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Now listen carefully to what he says in verse 7. We're saying that we have to learn to accept bad news. The psalmist said, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. See, when we recognize God, then we recognize and we accept evil tidings, bad news, but we're not afraid because our trust is in God. The psalmist goes on to say, not only is he not afraid of evil tidings, he says, his heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he shall see his desire upon his enemies. You know, David would tell us, or excuse me, Paul would tell us in Romans chapter 8 that all things work together for good to them that love God. That's Romans 8 and verse 28. And so, friends, when you have bad news, if you've got your trust in the Lord and you're looking to the Lord, you don't have to be afraid of those bad tidings. You don't have to be scared when you have to accept bad news. And friends, I hope this sinks deeply within your heart and you accept what God has said on this very important matter. Brother Dan. Well, Brother Kerry, thank you so much for sharing those words with us. I know that uh, they're very meaningful, as has been all the words that we've heard today from our panelists. And we now go to our last panelist on the program uh, to help us realize how important it is for us to allow other people to help us through that crisis or through the bad news that may have hit our ears. Stephen? Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2 tells us that we should bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. 
Understanding it's a part of God's law that we should help one another really does bring it home to me because sometimes we don't think of things as, as rules or laws. Sometimes we just think of things as suggestions. But this really is a command. It's something that we should do. And when I think about helping one another's burdens, it, it also brings back to mind the idea of Jacob losing his son. And when we think about the situation of losing your own son, though I haven't experienced that, someone who has lost their own son can better help others navigate that difficulty. When I think of, uh, of Paul, Paul said in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 16, he was refreshed by his brother Onesimus, and it was often that he was refreshed by him. And Onesimus was not ashamed of Paul's chains. And I think partly is because Onesimus himself was one of chains. He was a slave. And I also think of those who can better help situations of navigation, can help better bear when they themselves have been through it. And for my idea here, what brings to mind is Christ. Christ is our perfect Savior for a lot of reasons. But if you look at Hebrews chapter 2, verses 17 and 18, it tells us in 17 that he had to become like us to be our perfect Savior. He had to take on flesh and become humanity. And being human, he, he experienced what humans always experience, pain, suffering, hunger. He experienced tiredness and sleeplessness. But look at verse 18. In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 18, it says, For he himself has suffered, being tempted, is able to aid those who are tempted. And so Christ can help us bear our own burdens, but it helps us to understand that when we've been through something difficult, when we understand the pain someone's been through, we are especially equipped to help that brethren, to help that brother or sister in Christ. And so I would encourage all of us as we uh, look at others and evaluate ourselves, we all have crises. We all have difficulties, but we are, as the church is designed, to help one another. Back to you, Dan. Well, Stephen, thank you so much. And do you know when you read the rest of that text, it says, and so fulfill the law of Christ. And do you know when you will not allow other people to help bear your burden, you have denied them the privilege of fulfilling the law of Christ. And that's why it's so significant and so important for us to reach out to one another. I certainly hope and pray you don't hear any bad news today, but I do hope and pray that if you do, then you know how to handle it just a little bit better. Don't believe everything you hear. My dad used to say, don't believe anything you hear and only half of what you see. <laughs> now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I know one thing that we have to be very, very careful when it comes to bad news because we hear it all the time. We appreciate so much your being a part of our telecast today. We want to uh, invite you to uh, tune in next week at the same time right here on this same channel uh, for another presentation of Give Me the Bible. It's a delight and a pleasure for us to share with you these wonderful and timely truths of the Word of Almighty God. We'd like to encourage you to visit the Church of Christ in your area, and there I think you'll find a group of people who are just like yourself. We're all wanting to go to heaven, and we all have that quest for biblical knowledge uh, that will help us build our faith and help us under the grace of Almighty God to get to that celestial city. So uh, thank you again for being a part of our telecast today. I'm Dan Manuel. I've been your host this morning, and uh, I hope that uh, all of you will reach out to other people now and encourage them and lead them through their crisis that they may be facing even in their own life. And we hope that you would join us next week at this same time right here on this same channel for another presentation of Give Me the Bible.
Sing the sweetest song of all. 